God is an awesome God. Hey guys, welcome to the Tabernacle Trinity Hall show. You know, um, we're still trying to get everything together, so this is our second broadcast from our new foundation, amen. Uh, we did make a little introduction, so you can say really um, logistically, it's our third one, but this is our second full show, amen. amen. So hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And good night to all of you guys out there. And I'm your host, James and Pamela Harold. And we are the hosts of the Tabernacle Trinity Hall, the show. God is awesome, God. And we feel good to be here. Amen. Amen. You know, I was just thinking about the things in the world. You know, when Egypt was in the, uh, in the um, not Egypt, but when Israel was in the desert, in the wilderness. And God would feed them. He would supply all their needs. Mm -hmm. And even when God supplied their needs, they still desire the things of the world. Amen? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I said, you know, let's talk about that a little bit. You know, let's talk about the things that are of the world. And so, you know, <clears throat> with that being said, I think I went to, um, I want to go to, um, uh, let me see, 1 John 2.14. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the things of the world versus the things that are of God. Amen. So, let's see. 1 John 2.14. So, we're going to talk about that. And um, But before we get into that, um, Pam, how have your day been? Oh, it's been a beautiful day. You and I hung together because it's Thanksgiving. So it was a good day. Amen. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to take these off my ear, guys. Uh, I forgot I had them on, but that's okay. I had to put them on to make sure that we have sound coming through. But I know we got sound coming through. Amen. Amen. Yes, God is an awesome God. And uh, my day been pleasant. My day been with you. So, of course, my day been pleasant. My wife is happy, so therefore I am pleasantly doing okay. I'm happy. Amen. Amen. God is an awesome God, and I love God, oh, I love Him so much, and if I love God so much, you know I love me so much, and if I love me so much, you know I love my wife so much, amen? amen. So God is first, amen, and my wife, I put her before me, but I can't love her without first loving God, who teaches me how to love myself, mm -hmm. so that I can love her, so that, you know, the two, we are now one, 25 years We've been together Coming long up. enough to be one. Amen. Coming up, Amen. We, we're not perfect. Nope, we're not. But we got a whole lot of going for us that is in God. Amen. 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 God had truly provided for us, guys. Amen. And I won't go back and sell that for nothing. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. Yep, you're supposed to say me too. <laughs> She's standing there. Amen. I agree with you. <laughs> Amen. You know, so anyhow, guys, <clears throat> what we are talking about today, we are talking about desiring the things that are of God. You have to choose, you know, uh, the things of your heart shows you who you choose to love. You choose to love God. Or you choose to love the things that are of the world. Right. Life is about choices. Life is about you choices. And you to think about the choices that you make. Amen. And we should be Christ-like, Christ-centered. But it's, it's a walk. It's, it's a, a walk. It's, it's a walk. It's a process. It's a process. It's a beautiful thing. Amen. Amen. God is awesome, God. And here, see, here's the thing, too, guys. Is, you know, when I'm in school, I always ask... <clears throat> Why do we need to do mathematics, you know? And, you know, in school, you don't think ahead. You're just thinking of what you got to do. You, you're thinking of, I wish this class was over, you know? I want to get out of here and go and do some other things. you in the moment. In the moment. But when you get older, you begin to calculate things. You begin to calculate things, and um, you begin to see the reason for mathematics. Because, like Pam said, what about choices? Life is about choices. Making choices? It's about choices. Amen. And we don't always make the right choices, no, we don't. but sometimes we do. Yes, we do. So now we're talking about algebra. Because a positive, 
plus a positive is positive. But a positive plus a negative, you subtract. You don't add. And so you have positive right choices and negative wrong choices. Amen? Amen. So God is awesome, guys. So that's what we are talking about. You know, what choices, guys, are you making? What choices are you guys making out there? Because, you know, there's a right way and there is a wrong way. Amen? Amen. And sometimes we think that we are making the right way and we are actually not. Well, as Christians, we should start concentrating and practicing and focusing on going to God in prayer. Amen. Our choices before we make them. Because he's the one that's leading and ordering our steps. Amen. He is. He the one. He's the one that um shows us the way that we have not known. He the one that when we was blind made a way for us. Mm -hmm. He the one that guides us in a path that we have not known. He the one that make our quickness straight. He's the one that take our darkness and make it light before us. Mm -hmm. Just like he did with Israel. Mm -hmm. Amen. Israel had no idea where they was going when Moses said, come follow me in the name of God. Amen. And you know, we do everything now in the name of Jesus. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Moses led the people out in a way that they have not known. And they still, they had to get to know God all over again. So God, while he was in the wilderness, began to reintroduce himself to them. He said that the our righteous shall know him through faith. That the just shall live from faith to faith. Amen. And that's what God wants. He wants us to know him. Not the things he can do for us. That's an addition to. But he wants us to know him. Just like our relationship. And getting to know each other. Amen. That's what God wants Amen. more than anything else in the world. Is to get to know for us to get to know him. And and we work we learn to work things out. We learn how to disagree, uh, how to agree when we are disagreeing. We learn how to uh, agree to disagree. You know, how do you choose to disagree? How do you handle your differences? And that's the same thing with God. God is teaching us how to walk in the way that He has laid out for us. But through us making choices, he don't forcefully makes us do anything, do he? He wants us to willingly. That's love. love yeah. That's love. That's what you call love. Mm -hmm. Everything else is going to pass away but love because God is real and God is love. Amen. So how can love pass away when God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end? Huh? He's the I am that I am. Huh? He's yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. So even our lifetime, our eternity with God is still not long enough to learn everything that we need to know about God because God is living a lot longer than eternity. Amen. Amen. God is outside of eternity. God is outside of time. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So we want to talk about that. I want to read to you guys um, uh, 1 John 2 verse 14 and we be led, okay? Because we are talking about making choices. Now here we go. And so I say to you fathers who know the eternal God and to you young men who are strong with God's word in your hearts. Okay, we got the fathers that already know God. We got sons coming up that already know Christ and have learned your struggle against Satan. Amen. In other words, we are now washed by the blood of Jesus. For the wages of sin is death. You're defeated if you're still there. But the gift of God is eternal life. So with that, our struggles against Satan is won. Amen. Amen. Because God, He delivers us. And He promised that no one shall pluck us from his hands. Amen? Amen. He's an awesome God. So we know who you know, God is talking about. God talking about, if you are already up me, then stop loving this evil world and all that it offers you. For when you love these things, you show that you do not really love God. 
Ha! Huh. Now let's go back to Israel when I was saying it reminded me of them being in the wilderness. God would feed them, what's that word? Uh, mama? Manna. 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 God would feed them manna while it was there on a daily base. And so they had to eat it for that day. And if they tried to save some for the next day, it would turn um, spore and rotten and magnets would be in it from flies. Amen. And it would not be um, edible. But God is saying, you have to choose. Are you choosing me? Or are you choosing Satan? You know, the things of the world are um, of Satan. Christians, we are not of the world. We are in the world. But, you know, too many times we are desiring things of the world. Too many times we want what everybody else wants. Just like Israel did when everybody had a king. And they wanted a king too. And God told them because you want a king, this, 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 and that would happen. He's doing the same thing right now. He's telling us if we're desiring the things of the world, such and such and such is going to happen, and that we can't love him and the things of the world too. Yeah, and I think it's all in the motive that you have, because we can enjoy what he allows us to bless us with, but you have to make sure that you don't let that become your God. Amen. Let, your, let that become your desire that you seek after more. Amen. Him. Amen. Because why have a great big mansion and there's nobody there but you? you? You're not sharing it with nobody. You're just keeping it to yourself and you're using it as a pride of life. Instead of using it to host people who are homeless. I'm not just saying anybody because you got to be led by the Spirit. Yes. Because I see homeless people all the time on the corners. I'm hungry. Help me. But they've been out there all day, all week, all month. And if they really want something, then they can go out and give something to get something. They can go out and buy water bottle, water bottles. I see people do it sometimes. They get water bottles or long sugar canes or whatever, and they hand it out in exchange for a cost, you know. And so if I'm seeing somebody out there every day, every day, every day, but yet, they're not going to make effort to give back. But they always got their hands out because they want you to give, give, give. But then, we have to be led by the Spirit in all things. Amen? Everybody has their own story as to the reason why they're out there. But the God will lead you. Amen? Heaven, if He knows that person. Heart. Amen. Believe the Holy Spirit will direct you. Amen. The Holy Spirit will direct you because some people out there are seriously out there and cannot help themselves. They are just starting or whatever the case might be. And that's why I made clear that I said these people you see out there all day, every day, weeks and weeks, you know they have, have enough money to go right there to the grocery store to buy uh, a, a case of water or something. Take it back with them, sit it there. If that's what they can do, if they can't get a job, do that. And when somebody gives you something, you give them something back. Thank you. Always remember, where there's a good intention, there's always an evil intention. Amen. Amen. And where there's good, there's also evil. And let not Satan make evil of your good. Amen. So, like my wife was saying, it is in the motive. Um, I'm going to get on... Um, Singers, you know, you 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 fame, you know, you you you're famous and everything. You have concerts and stuff, and I want to I want to I want to target gospel singers. Okay, you're having a concert, and um, everybody had to pay to come to that concert. You just got a new rocker. Hey, buy my rocker. But when was the last time you had a free concert? When was the last time you did something to give back? without asking for anything first. Amen? So see, God, He gives freely. We know that every ministry needs to support itself. That's understandable. But if you out there and got what is called gold albums and hits and hits and hits, and every time you have a show, you got to charge for that show, when was the last time you chose to give something back? Amen? You know, it's just, you know, your motive, the things we're thinking. Sometimes we can think that we're doing what's right and we're doing what is wrong. 
we go back to that algebra again. So that's why God held that relationship with us. You heard my wife talk about it. She said that we don't always make the right decisions, but that's what God does because when we make wrong decisions, we build our relationship with Him, and He shows us by making our crookedness straight, by making our blind to be our darkness to be light before us. Amen. So yes, you know, there's many things, you know, you can do. Pastors, you won't go and preach in certain churches because they ain't paying what you want them to pay you. But what you got, God gave it to you. You didn't go out and invent it. You got it because God gave it to you. And because you're choosing to be rewarded in the flesh, but then that's your reward. You don't get rewarded um, in heaven if you're already getting rewarded now for what you're doing. But you know, if we are called to do something in God, and if the Holy Spirit is in our hearts, you will truly do what is right when it comes to doing the things of God. And when you do the things that are not so right, it's not intentional. And if it is intentional, you will be led to repentance if you are truly moving and growing in God's spirit. Amen? Amen. I just pray that everybody examine their own heart. Because God knows the motives of everybody. All we're here is to continue to show the love of Christ. Because God is the judge. He knows. And even though your good may not be in the forefront. But you know in your heart that your life is for the Lord. And it will be shown even in small ways or in ways that are shown through the public. Amen. And that's why the Lord say, those that are in Christ, as I read right here, stop loving this evil world and all that it offers you. For when you love these things, you show that you do not really love God. For all these worldly things, these evil desires, the craze for sex, the ambition to buy everything that appears to you, and the pride that comes from wealth and importance, these are not from God, okay? They are from this evil world itself, and this world is fading away, and these evil, forbidding things will go with it. But whoever keeps doing, keeps doing the will of God will live forever. Guys, think about that. Think about the things you're doing. Think about how many, if you got four foul cars and it's only one of you. You got four foul horses where you only need one. You're not helping nobody. You're not giving nobody a ride nowhere. You're not trying to find where God would have you to be or uh, to be a part of the ministry of reconciliation. You know, it's a lot of things. Your attitude. Your how, what is your attitude or your conduct on your job, you know, uh, how is your conduct and your attitude towards your friends, your family, your wife, your husband, your children, yourself, even strangers, amen? So we got to consider everything we did because here's a prime example, Cain and Abel. Cain gave to the Lord, but he didn't give his best. And Cain was a farmer, and Abel gave to the Lord, but he gave his best. And so, what does the word say about that? Let's go and read that right fast. Well, it says that God is an awesome God. It says that it was by faith that Abel obeyed God and brought an offering that pleased God more than Cain's offering did. God accepted Abel and proved it by accepting his gift. When you do your best for the Lord, even the things you buy, yeah, you might pay your tithes, you might pay your offerings, but still, there are other things and areas in your life that you need to really, you know, consider are those things of God. Are you desiring the things of the world? You see something you want, you got to go and get it. 
You know, it's not nothing you need, it's something you want. You see somebody walking down the street, you got to have everything that walked by you that is attractive to you. You're proud of life. You got something. You got it just to show it off. You know, you want to be seen as what? Top, top person or whatever it might be. And so what Abel, he gave his best, but Cain and God accepted the gift of Abel. And Though Abel is long dead, get this, we can still learn lessons from him about trusting God. See, Cain killed his brother Abel because he was jealous. God warned Cain that you can do your best, be obedient, or else you're, you're threading on dangerous grounds. You're about to go into a a avenue of sin, a place that you don't want to go. And he surely did. He killed his brother. He became a murderer. But still, Abel, being dead, his gift he gave God speaks out louder than Cain's whole life. Well, Paul says, examine yourself and make sure that you're in the faith. And so we have to constantly examine ourselves and make sure that the things that we say and do is focused on Christ's life. It's focused on giving God the glory. It's focused on allowing the Holy Spirit to draw people to God because that is the do of the, the reason why we live. It's for Him first and then allowing our vessel to be used by Him so that He can draw people to Him. To Him. We are called to the ministry of reconciliation and how do we do that? We study to show ourselves approved. We meditate. Go ahead, Pam. And you pray. So you pray. Is your relationship with the Lord and conversation with Him. You have conversation with Him just like me and my wife have conversation with each other. Mm -hmm. We talk about things. We make plans together. You do the same thing with God. You're building that relationship with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And you've been faithful with God. God judges the heart. And at least you do unto one of his, you have also done it unto him. Mm -hmm. And it is those, it's, it's going to be those that are going to say, When did I give you water when you was thirsty? When did I give you clothes when you, didn't, when you was naked? When did I come and visit you when you was locked up? When did I come and comfort you when you were sick? And God is going to tell them, at least you did unto one of mine, you have also done it unto me. So God is an awesome God. So hey, when you're choosing the things not of the world, guess what, guys? When you're choosing those things, what you're doing, you're not being selfish. You're not being selfish. You can be selfish in things that you do, or you can be selfless in the things that you do. You know, God is a righteous God, and because He's righteous, we too have to be righteous. Uh, Philippians 2, 3 said, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. That's why we do the Tabernacle Trinity Hall this show, because we want to help you and we want you to help us. We, the world say, not to forsake the assembly of being gathered together as the manner of such ills, but to add what exalt each other so much the more as you see the day approach. What day? Our trials and our tribulations, our burden days. Amen. If I can share in my wife's burden by all means necessary, my hands are there to help somebody to give them a hand up. Because when I give them a hand up by sharing in their burden, then when they rejoice, I'm going to be able to rejoice with them. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, God is an awesome God. See, God does things in a way that is so sweet mm, that even a sugar cane can't touch him. God is an awesome His God. His love is so divine. It divine. Is, it is so awesome. <laughs> and then once you experience it, it's one thing to be taught, but when you experience it, like one of those sermons that we heard the, the preacher say, that once you've experienced it, you can't tell him 
that once he had experienced fire, you can't tell him that fire is not hot. Amen. Once you get that experience of of God and his Amen. love for your life, it, 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 it changes you. Amen. It changes you. Amen. God is an awesome God. He is so awesome. He is so awesome, I tell you. You know, um, so that's what we see, guys. So we see that, you know, when you do the things that are of God, you know, in the way that God is calling you to do those things, you know, uh, you, you, you can't go wrong. You make mistakes along the way, but you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Amen. You can go wrong, but you can't go wrong. You know. Yeah, the Holy Spirit will nudge you, and he'll he'll bring you back, and especially when you're tentative to his his journey. Amen. Amen. He'll work out all things according to his will for those who love him. All things, the good, the bad, the ugly, and in between as well. There's all all the ones that we don't know. Amen. He's an awesome God. So yeah. So Cain, Cain didn't do the right thing, and he was a farmer, and Abel did the right thing. He was a shepherd, you know. And so, you know, when you do the right thing, you know, you, you, you end up doing things that are righteous. But when you're doing the wrong thing, you end up doing things that are out of darkness. You end up doing things that, that is out of rage. You know, you're not thinking. You're being quick to, to, to um, um, uh, 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 get angry, you know. And, 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 and me, I've come a long way because, you know, God purging in me. Just and that's what God He does. He purges us because I remember that there was a time when I was more spontaneous, spontaneous than I was slow and to give thought to something that I'm doing. Amen. Amen. So God is an awesome God, and because God is an awesome God, guys, you know, take your time to get to know God. You know, know God, love God, show Him. That you love him. Show him that he's number one in your life. Because you can't fool him. He's so tall you can't get over him. He's so low you can't get under him. And he's so wide you can't get around him. And you definitely is not going to go through him. Because you can't even go to the sun. Except he send you to the sun. And you can't get back to him. Unless you go through the Son. Amen. Amen. God is an awesome God. Hey guys, you know, this feels so good, you know, us being able to do this. Hey guys, we got a radio show now where there's Christian choir music. And if you go to www, and, and, and I'm going to put it on the Facebook thing, but it's www.mixlr.com. C O M forward slash Tabernacle dash Trinity dash Hall. And you go to our website here again, www.tabernacletrinityhall.org. You'll see the button there. One button is there. You can listen to it while you're on the page. The other button, it reads click on this if you want to continue to surf the um, internet. But if you go there, you can download the app, you have to register, and you can click on follow us. Also, we have a YouTube channel, you can go there and subscribe to it. Now, every Wednesday at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m., you can stream us live. Uh, you'll see the link again on Facebook. Um, you will go to um, TVSS21.com www.tvaccess21.com and you click on um, uh, live screen and you'll see us. And if you miss us, you can go to On Demand, then go to Series, and everything is in alphabetical order. You can scroll down to Tabernacle Trinity Hall to show. It's a lot of great things on that channel guys so go there it's not just us it's a lot of beautiful people shows on that that channel amen, amen. so God is an awesome God so hey guys be with us next week here on the Tabernacle Trinity Hall where we can say to you 
where our favorite lot of the B is that you are so beautiful. God bless. God is good. Amen. 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 God is so awesome. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. So, hey, I'm good to let you guys get back to your music and um, listen to what you want to be listening to. Um, and um, be blessed.